Heaven Father, your name is a strong tower. When the righteous run it to you, they are saved. It's time to hear from you, not the words of men, but the words that come from you. I pray that your word will come forth with power. It will shatter and break every stronghold. It will melt every heart and open every year. Even God has a decrease, increase, so that you can speak unto your people. Use me as a vessel to declare that oracles. Anything of carnality, we abolish. We take authority over the atmosphere. We subdue every principalities, every works of the enemy. We declare this place sanctified and it's used and good for the ministration by your spirit. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name that we are praying. Amen. The song says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it to him and they are saved. Last week, we learned intensively about the seals. And we learned about four of the seals. Uh, we learned about various events that took place during the opening of the seals. And when you read from Revelation chapter 5 verse 1 coming, the Bible declared that, the lamb took the seal out of the one that sat upon the throne and began to open them. And we also learn in Luke chapter 8 verse 10 that we have been granted the privilege to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. We also learn in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 to 14 that we have not received the spirit of the word, not to, not to understand the things of the spirit. But we have received the spirit of God in order for us to be able to understand clearly the things of the spirit which have been freely given unto us. And we read in John chapter 16 verse 13 that how be when the spirit of truth come, he will guide us into all truth and he will teach us things to come. We read in Matthew chapter 24 verse 5 to 8 when Jesus Christ began to unfold or to reveal, to grant us access to the end time prophecy that had been given over 2,000 plus years ago and begin to tell us about his mysteries and how we need to understand. So he declared something called the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows unto us. He told us about wars. He told us about pestilence. He told us about so many things, the earthquake that will happen. And he said that we should not be worried about those things because it needs to come. It is just the beginning of sorrows. By that declaration, he was giving us indication of the opening of the seal. The beginning of what? Of sorrow. When somebody tells you something is beginning, it's about the first stage that will unfold. So if we say that give me a numerical word of beginning, it's number one. So when somebody say number one, you know that it's beginning. You can know that the number two, number three, number four is what? It's coming. You can't say the beginning is hundred. The beginning starts from what? So Christ, in his infinite wisdom, granted us understanding the beginning of sorrows. Amen. And we realize that when the first seal was opened, there was first world war that happened. And it was specifically designed by the man who sat upon the white horse, going about conquering and to conquer. And there is nobody else in the Bible that sat on the white horse. All the other horses are colored, except the white horse, which our Lord Jesus Christ always sits on. Hallelujah. And Bible says he sits on it, and Israel is the centerpiece of God's program. The program cannot start. At that time, Israel were under the control of the Ottoman Empire. Their name had been changed to Philistines and Palestine. But as a result, God Almighty Christ sat upon his horse and freed the land 
during the First World War. And we know that after the First World War, the League of Nations was formed. Then the second sea was opened. When the second sea was opened, there was another second world war. When that world war was happening, there was a great revival in the world. That is where you hear about John G. Lake, uh, Wiggle, Wiggle, I forget his name, Wigglesworth, hallelujah, a man full of anointing and of the power of God. You hear about Watchman Lee, you hear about Derek Prince, you hear about all the great men that came during that Christian revival. The revival in the tent, Azusa Street, and all the revival that took place. And we also learned, during that time, technological advancement began to unfold in the world. You realize that how many of you recognize when the, the internet first came? When it's a dark tone? Oh, hallelujah. Now there is internet all over the place. It has been perfected. Hallelujah. During that time, all this thing began to what? Unfold. So during the Second World War, after the Second World War, the United States entered, after they had been attacked by Japanese in Pearl Harbor, they changed the course of the world of the Axis power. That was comprising Germany, Italy, and Japan. When their power was broken, Bible says that the, the allies overcame that as its power. And after that, they formed the United Nations, led by the United States, which solidified their power as a world superpower. They gave the right for the nation of Israel to be formed. So the first world war, the League of Nations, the land of Middle East was free. The second world war, Israel, the nation, was what? Was formed. And we also learned in October 17, 1987, when the third, the third sea was open, there's something called the Black Monday. Oh, hallelujah. World economy collapsed and people lost a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Then we end up in the fourth seal. And the Bible declared that in the fourth seal, he saw somebody sitting on a pay hall. And he was followed by death. Oh, hallelujah. He was followed by what? Death. And he went about to kill and to destroy. And we learned that there will be a third world war. After the third world war, there will be a new world order. As the first world war produced the League of Nations, the second world war produced United Nations, the third world war, which will be a nuclear war, but a short war, it to produce something called the new world order. Oh, hallelujah. When this order is produced, then, <laughs> beloved, wherever you stand, stand where? Because it's going to be terrible downwards from then on. Amen. Amen. Today we want to treat the fifth seal. Of all the seals, up to four, you see a horse. Sitting on something. You see a man granted power. But when we get to the fifth seal, which is in Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, and let me read for you. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them which were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Amen. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How, how long, O Lord, holy and true, do, I, do thou have judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? So the fifth seal is different from all the seals. There are, be, there are believers who have been killed, who are in heaven, or under the altar in heaven, and they are calling for vengeance. Oh, hallelujah. Bible said they are calling for what? Vengeance. And I want you to pay attention very critically. When they call for the vengeance, Bible said the Lord gave them a white robe and said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants who are their brethren 
the number of them should be killed as they were killed. So to fulfill the prophecy. Oh, hallelujah. So they call for vengeance. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. It's not time for vengeance here. There are many of believers that need to be killed. Oh, does it make sense? There are many of believers that need to be what? To be killed. They should wait until a number of believers that need to be killed should also die. And Bible says they were told to rest a little while. And white robes were given to them. It doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like God of love. Why should people should be killed? Oh, hallelujah. But many of us don't know the ways of the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says, when it was open, a lot of people would die. If you read uh, the fourth seal, he that sat on the fourth horse, the pale horse, Bible says he went about bringing death. And the fifth seal never mentioned anybody. So the fourth and the fifth are intertwined. Oh, hallelujah. Because it's the reign of the Antichrist and the destruction he's going to bring upon the surface of the earth. It's the way. Is the reign of the Antichrist, the four and the fifth, is the Antichrist era. Oh, hallelujah. That's why nothing was open, what was nothing was mentioned in the fifth seal, except those that need to be killed. So from the fourth seal to the fifth seal, oh, there will be what? There will be death that will come. There will be what? Death. Because in heaven they were told that believers will be. Kill the antichrist main agenda is to cause the believers to deny Jesus as their savior and accept him as God, which the Bible declares as what abomination. Amen. To achieve this, during his seven-year reign, he will start with deception to deceive many believers for the first 42 months of his reign and use them as evangelistic tools to convince many believers to his come, especially those from one world religion, which will include every religion on the earth. The only people, believer, hear me and hear me well, the only people that the Antichrist will not be able to subdue are people whose names are written in the book of life. I repeat, during the Antichrist reign, the only people he cannot subdue who will be able to resist him will be a believers whose name have been written in the book of life. Somebody is looking at me. We are going to read. Oh, hallelujah. In the book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb Slain from the foundation of the world. So anybody whose name is not written in the book of life, the Antichrist will subdue you. The Antichrist will bring you under submission. And will get there. Why? He will not be able to, to subdue them. After that, he will change the next 42 months and declare himself God. And demand worship through his false prophet who is the head of the one word religion. So it's not going to be only one word order. At that time, there's going to be one word religion. Churches will not exist anymore. Or do you hear me? There will be what? No church. If that church exists, you have to come under the umbrella of the false prophet. Oh, hallelujah. As you cannot buy or sell, or your refuser will mean death. Your refuser will mean that you will be what? You will be killed. He will use persecution to force surrender by means of the mark of the beast. You can buy or sell. Like I said, when you refuse what he's offering you, to accept him as God and to worship him and to get a mark of the beast, when you refuse, you will be killed. Oh, hallelujah. Now, let's go to how Christ presented this. 
how Christ presented it. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Going. Remember, last week we read from 24, verse 5 to 8. Today we are reading from Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 to 14. Then Christ said, they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because lawlessness or iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was cold. The love of many shall what? But he who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. The question I ask, will believers experience tribulation? Did that become a hot topic? Some people believe in pre-tribulation, which means believers will not go through tribulation. Some people believe that Believers will go through tribulation. But what does the Bible actually teach us? And I've, I've heard people believe in pre-tribulation, which, of course, I was a firm belief of that until the Lord opened my eyes. I did believe that so much that I was believing that God is not unrighteous. And when you ask me, I was quoting 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. I was quoting Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 and I was quoting Luke chapter 21 verse 36 which all says that the Lord have not appointed us to wrath. We say that he that believe in me the trial that is coming upon this surface of this earth I will redeem you. Yes, the Bible says that. And it's true. But one thing that we forget to become clear about is that the the, the believer's tribulation is under the auspices and control of the Antichrist, not by God invoking his wrath upon the earth. Oh, hallelujah. So we forget to differentiate between the wrath of God. And I hear people also say, God didn't allow Noah to go through the flood. He was saved. People say the Lord was saved. During the Sodom and Gomorrah destruction, I also want to ask you a question. If you believe in pre-tribulation, what about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going to the fire before they were saved? What about Daniel going through the lion's den before he was delivered? Is it not the same God? So that argument is not solid. It's assumption. That argument that Lord didn't go through the fire Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego went through the oven of fire. Daniel went through the lion's den. So that argument that we give is not solid. It's just assumption that we are making. It sounds good to the ears, but is that what the Bible teaches? Oh, hallelujah. To understand this topic, there are many prophets that have been given in regard to this topic. But God gave the details to John. And it's called the seven seals. The details are in the seven seals. It's like you saw buy one, one free. And that is what many of you are doing. Buy one, one free. We won't go through tribulation. But when you go to the store, that you buy one, and they'll tell you it's up to $250. If you buy goods worth up to $250, then you get what? One free. So that is what we are doing. We are going about proclaiming that we won't go through tribulation. Meanwhile, our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us we go through. Meanwhile, the book of Revelation said, do not add or subtract. And we are adding and subtracting from what? The book of what? Revelation. It's clearly saying that believers will go through tribulation. Amen. My question, I ask everybody, who come first? Antichrist or Christ will come first? 
if you are able to answer that question, it will help you to go back to the Bible to re-study it. Will the Antichrist come before the day of the Lord? Yes. That is what the Bible teaches. And I just want us to look clearly into the Bible, what the Bible says, whether the Antichrist come first or Jesus will come first. Oh, hallelujah. I want us to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. 2 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Now, uh, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that he not be soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter out from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So Paul is acknowledged that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse 3, let no man, let no man deceive you by any means. So all those people who are going around proclaiming that we won't go through tribulation, answer this question. Will Antichrist come first or Christ will come first? So Paul, by the word of the Lord, he said, let no man deceive you. Maybe you are believing in the past, but look into the Bible and let no man deceive you. For that day, please hear me and hear me where. He said, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, that is the Antichrist. Until the falling away, and that man of sin, the son of perdition, he said Christ will not appear first. Antichrist will show up. And when you go to the seals, the Antichrist is the fourth seal. He sit upon it and went about killing and to kill and to kill. The fifth seal, they were told they should wait for their... It's not God killing them. It's the Antichrist calling the dead of believers upon the surface of this earth. Amen. Some people also make arguments. That the real Christians will be raptured and the bad Christians will be left behind for them to go through the tribulation. I don't know where they get their scripture from. There is no one scripture that supports that. Stop that assumption and let's talk about what the Bible says. Let's teach about what the Bible says so that we can give people the real word of the Lord. If there is no something that we go through, we, we will go through. Christ wouldn't have said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, that he that endured to the end, endure what? Endure singing praises? Endure eating chicken McDonald's? And, uh, endure eating uh, fufu or eba or cassava leaves still? Uh, is that what we endure? If there is nothing that we are going to go through, the word endurance will not be mentioned. Oh, hallelujah. According to Jesus, there are six major things that will happen to some believers during the, I, I repeat, some believers during the tribulation as revealed by Jesus Christ. Remember, I mentioned Shadrach, Mezak, Abednego. They were in a fire. Nothing happened to them. We'll get to it. Daniel was in a lion's den. Nothing happened to Daniel. Yes, believers will go through tribulation. But those whose names are in the book of life, it's another story altogether. The power of God that will demonstrate. Oh, if you are a believer, that your name is written in the book of life. Your time of power, your time of rain, your time of glory is coming. If you didn't die, and that day happened to you on this earth, oh, the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord shall be your portion. If your name is written in the Lamb book of life. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. According to Jesus, number one, Many believers will be killed. Two, we will be hated by what? All nations. Offenses will cause believers to betray one another. False prophets will arise. Lawlessness will cause the love of God of many to grow cold. And says the gospel of the kingdom will be preached. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. 
Hallelujah. Prophecies concerning the believers during tribulation. Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. These are some of the prophecies that was foretold concerning believers when they are in tribulation. Thus he said, verse 23, Daniel chapter 7, verse 23. Thus he said, the four beasts shall be a fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth and trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall rise from this kingdom, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, and shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints, please, I want you to listen carefully. Then the saints shall be given into his hands for a time and a time, and for a time and times and a half. A time is one year. Times is two years. Half is half a year. So three and a half years, which is 42 months, the saints will be given to his hands. The saints will be what? Given to the hands. And this was prophesied by Daniel over 2,500 years ago. Oh, hallelujah. But the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Oh, somebody will say that is in the Old Testament. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 7 to 10. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7 to 10. And it was granted to him to make war with the, with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, nation, and all who dwell on earth will worship him, whose name have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation. And if anyone have ears, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with a sword shall be killed. And here is a wisdom. And here, here is a patient and the faith of the saints. Amen. Well, now you realize that believers will be killed the fifth seal, they will be what? Destroyed in the fifth seal. Believers will be killed and be destroyed in the fifth seal. Now, let me tell you about the false prophet. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 to 18, then I saw another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast in the presence and caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the beast. So the first prophet, which is who had the one world religion, he is the one that is going to cause people to worship the beast. Now, the beast is going to declare himself as God. When he declares himself as God, he will have his prophet, called the false prophet, who is heading the one world religion. And this leader will cause all those who dwell on this earth to worship the beast. He will set up an image like the time of King Nebuchadnezzar that whosoever will not worship that image, you will be killed. Like Shadrach, Mezak, Abednego were cast into the lake of fire. So those of you who make references of Lord and Noah, this is the actual reference that is related directly to what happened in the past. The same image will be set up and anybody who doesn't bow to that image, they will kill you as they deal to Shadrach, Mezak, Abednego. But those who have been granted Access of life. Who will not bow down. As Shadrach, Mezak, Abednego went to the fire and nothing touches their skin. So shall be the believers at that time. Oh, somebody here with me. And I pray that you understand this mystery. The devil, through the false prophet, will set an image. And anybody who doesn't bow 
will die. But there will be believers. As Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told the king, King, don't worry yourself. We will not bow down today. We will not bow down tomorrow. There will be some Christians during this dispensation that will not bow down. There will be power of God packaged in them like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went into the fire. The person who is throwing them into the fire died. And the people, the people go into the fire, they leave. Oh, hallelujah. It shall be our dispensation. That's why I said that if you are a child of God, rejoice. Because the demonstration and the power of God is coming unto you. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. That the image of the beast both speak and cause as many that will not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Oh, are you hearing me? He causes all both, small, great, rich, poor, free. That day, if you have money in your bank account, billion, it will not matter. You need to bow. God is giving us a privilege. God even doesn't kill nobody if you don't worship him until the judgment day. But the Antichrist, no, 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 no. If you don't bow, he's killing you. They will make a replica of the Antichrist as an image. And everybody, and I believe it will be at every corner, every street. As you are walking past the street, you need to bow and worship him. Oh, hallelujah. With the technology, there will be cameras all over. Whoever doesn't bow, they will see you. Oh, hallelujah. The prince of the power of the air will see you. Or oh, do you know that Satan, one of his names, is called the prince of what? Of the air. He will see you wherever you are. He's going to use technology to fix you out. And he will kill you. Hallelujah. Unless your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Then the glory and the power of God is upon you. As Philip vanished, as he preached to the Ethiopian Enoch, believers will walk under the power of God as never before. That is where the Bible says, when you drink any deadly thing, it will not what? Harm you. Because at that time, nuclear warfare has happened and they won't give you the clean water unless you bow to the beast. But God will protect his people because they have one assignment. The gospel must be preached to every creature upon the surface of this earth. So God's judgment will be righteous. Oh, somebody here will be. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 declare they that know their God at that time they shall stand up and do what? Explore. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many. Daniel 11 verse 32, 33. Yet for many days they shall fall by the sword and flame by captivity and problem. Now they shall fall, they shall be aided with a little help. But many shall join them by the intrigue. And some of those understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the time of the end. Because it is still for the appointed time. Oh, hallelujah. There is one scripture that I want to open your eyes to. And I know that you have quoted that scripture. In the past, I have quoted it. I have said it. But until the Lord opened my eyes to it, that scripture... Even though we quote it, we have every right to quote it. It has an end time connotation to it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 30. How many of you have quoted it? For we're reaching not against what? Flesh and blood. Oh, haven't you quoted that? I want to reread re re this scripture to you again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you. The whole armor of God. That he may be able to withstand. In the evil day. There is a day. It's called the evil day. That the enemy is going to unleash. Against believers. So the Bible says. In order for you to overcome it. Now. Take on the whole armor of God. So that your name will be written in the Lamb book of life. I read on. Stand therefore. Having your land guilt about with truth 
And having on the breastplate of righteousness, you are filled with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, where he that you be able to quench all the fairy dust of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So during this time, only believers who are equipped like this will be able to stand. Those who have the helmet of salvation, who didn't live for American dream, those who didn't live. Who didn't come to church just for marriage to get a good husband? Those who didn't just pray that God will kill their enemies. But those who understand the time of the season, like the sons of Issachar, by preaching the gospel in the end time. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let me give you another scripture that we misquoted. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 30. And it shall come to pass afterward. That I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. And also in my male servant and on my male, on my male servant will I pour my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and, and the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. When we quote this scripture for the apostles, which of course... Peter quoted it in Acts chapter 2, verse 37 going. In most prophecies, there are layers of understanding in it. Here, he's talking about we've been equipped with anointing of God. Peter's time, there was no blood and fire. There's no pillars of smoke that came. Our time, the buildings will be burning. Things will go wrong. Smoke will fill the earth. But they that know their God, nothing by enemies will hurt them. They will stand up and do what? And do exploits. My question is, will you be among them? The way we are worshiping God now for prosperity. Even when we are teaching this, many believers don't believe it. Many believers don't believe it. Oh, we have heard it before. There was a Spanish flu. There was this flu. They will give you so many flus that have come. But have you forgotten? First, Second Peter chapter, chapter 3. He said that, have you forgotten? That a day is like a thousand years unto the Lord. Christ asked a question. When the Son of Man come, will you really find faith on earth? Will you be among those he cannot trust? Revelation 3, 5, say, say, He who overcome shall be clothed in a white garment. I will, and I will not blot his name from the book of life. Some people's name will be blot out. Please, those who also preach, one save, save forever, hear what Jesus Christ is saying. He who that overcome shall be clothed in white garment. And I will not blot out his name from the book of life. So it means that if you don't overcome, your name will be blotted out. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He would have hear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. God richly bless you. Amen.